If you are the teacher who will moderate the blog posts and the comments of your classes, then log into the kidblog.org website using your username and password. And once you've logged in, this is what you will see if you have been registered as a teacher. You have most of the powers that an administrator would have. In, in fact, you have a dashboard where you can see how many posts have been posted, uh, how many comments uh, and how many things have been approved. You can write a new blog post, obviously, just like one of your pupils could do. So you can keep them informed about things that you want them to talk about in their blog posts, for example. You can review posts that uh, are waiting for approval, for example. You can review the comments and uh, moderate them. And you can add users, which is very important if you're managing the blog site for your classes, for your school. So adding a user is very easy. Just click on the tab users and uh, click on add users to this class. And now you can decide to add a user by just giving them a username and a password. But if you need to create multiple users, you can add more than one user at one time by using a, a CSV file and clicking on bulk create. Anyway, if you're just adding a single user for now, let's call him Lucas. Give him a password and you can select what the student's role is, what you can select what this user's role is. In this case, it's a student, but you could have moderators whose role is only to be able to approve posts and comments. You could have other teachers helping you to manage the site so they can add users and change some of the settings like you're doing. Or you could have guests. So let's select student and click on add user. Once your user is created, you can go back to the list of students or users. And Lucas has now been uh, created in your list. However, please notice that Lucas is Username is not Lucas because it's quite a popular name. So Lucas, in this case, has become Lucas181. And he will know, need to have that username if he wants to log in and start posting. So make sure that when you give the username to your pupils, you use the username that is generated after you have added a pupil and not the username that you wrote in the form because it might not be necessarily their real username. Something very important for your users is their password. And that is the reason why kidblog.org doesn't let the users, if they are students, to change their own passwords, but only the administrators like the teachers. So if you click on users and you want to add a new user, as we've done before, you know that you need to add a username and a password. It is a good idea to make sure you keep a record of the password for each individual student that you are adding. This is useful because the students could sometimes lose their passwords and then they won't have um, any more access to blogs. However, if you haven't got a record of their password and they've forgotten theirs when you created their account, you can go back to the um, user's, user's uh, page and click on edit uh, underneath each individual user and then you can create a new password if you want to change it for them. You could create a new class but please don't because we have created classes in our domain so that each class represents a school. If you want to look at the blog posts that your class has created, just click on go to class blogs. And here you will be given a 
list of all the blog posts that have been created and you can select just the ones that have been created today, this week, this month, this year or any time at all in the history of the blog. So you can look at your posts, the ones that you have created yourself and you can create a new post just by clicking on the top tab there. Creating a post is very easy. Just add the title, and that could be a test post, and here you have a normal editor like any other blog uh, website. To this blog post, you can actually add images by clicking on this little icon, and then selecting an image from a URL, if you want, or from your computer by simply selecting a file from your folders. And that will put it in your blog posts. You can also add a video by simply clicking on this icon. And you can put the URL of a video that could be in YouTube, for example. And you can give a title and then click on insert to the post if you want that to be um, shown in your blog post. You can also add a video like the images from a video that is um, uploaded locally in your machine, in your computer. Other things that you can add is audio files and media files. So things like uh, PDF files, Word documents, PowerPoints. If you want to share something with everybody, or get your pupils to share something with everybody, then they can use that option also to add a file. Once you're ready, you can preview your blog post by clicking the preview and checking that everything is as you wanted it. You can then publish your blog post when you're ready. If you publish this blog post, it obviously doesn't need any moderation because you are one of the moderators, a teacher. However, if a child publishes the blog post, then you will receive an email telling you that somebody has posted this blog post and that you need to moderate it in order for the blog post to be visible to anybody who goes to kidblog.org forward slash Crossy. In this case, because we are talking about Crossy Calio School. So I hope that this video tutorial on how to organize and run your class blog will be of use to you and it will allow you to be very creative with your children and have some great discussions about science and about how NGF or Camera Resources have been helping your children in science.